It was during the northeast monsoons that we caught up with the Onge at Dugong Creek. They called this season Maya Kangne and built their shelters within these ancient aerial roots of the mangroves within the creeks of Galbalombe, their island. They chose to stay here throughout this season for reasons we would learn later. Sure-footed and agile in places where we would hesitate to walk, Tai and his friends knew the secret places where the mangrove crab could be found. Whilst here, they would also get the fruits that the mangroves would yield to them. gradually gave way to Kuala Kangne, the period of the southwest wind and the monsoons. For the Onge, therefore, it was time to move into the forest. Kakei and her band were out in the forest looking for the gigi or the wild potato. This was the responsibility of the women and often involved long walks in the arboreal forest, alive with leeches and mosquitoes, yet generous with food for them. <laughs> Look at the Onge way of collection of a tube. He digs up the, she digs up the earth, exposes the tuba cuts a portion that is sufficient for our own use and refills the earth. It would seem ridiculously labor intensive to a non-tribal mind. But please try and understand why she does that. Of course, her ready excuse is the spirit up above is watching and I am stealing for nature, therefore I am hiding it. But in reality, the crystallized wisdom of the society that underlies this is in a tropical moist forest, biodiversity is high, there are too many species, but the landmass is too small and therefore too many species have crammed in very small plot of land. Therefore, the number of individuals of any one species is perilously low. If you over exploit, it might result in a local extinction. So instead of uprooting a plant, you let the plant be, you take exactly what you need so that the plant grows again. And next year, once again, you can come and harvest a portion of that. What they call in Ongi, cut it up belak way. Everything has to be cut it up belak way. You must keep it, you know. Don't discard it. Don't just consume it. Don't just throw it away. <laughs> Contrary to belief, the soil here was neither lush nor fertile in that sense. The seeming paradox of these forests lay in the efficiency of the root systems, covering all available space, transforming all decaying matter into living, 
in a cycle that had not been interrupted for a billion years. This was nature's primeval mechanism that had succeeded in creating and nurturing the existence of over one third of all living species here on earth within this canopy. उसी कंट्रा पूर्ण के जाता, वो हवा का रुख मालूम देता। फिर जहाँ जिस तरफ जाता बुशी, उसका नीचे से घूम के उल्टा साइड से शिकार करके आएगा। आदमी या बदन का बास शुगर को पहले नहीं मिलना। और तीन तो ऐसा है उसमें ऐसा घुसाने वाला रहते हैं। मारने का बात अलग हो जाएगा वो अंदर ही रह जाएगा शुगर के बाद को तिल्ली जो है ऐसा आड़ा हो जाएगा पूरा रसी लपेट के उसमें घुसा देता वो कोई बेल में जाके पच जाएगा फिर वो भागने नहीं सकेगा वो तो कोई कोई को अच्छा जगह लग जाए तो इटे मर जाते जो थोड़ा जिंदा रहता तो वो तो बेल में जाके पचेगा फिर जाके वहाँ जाके फिर वही तीर घुसा देगा तो बगल में उसका जान का जाएगा फिर बांध के फिर लेके आते you have seen that when the Nungi hunts a pig, they cut a notch in a large branch in the nearest tree and bend it downwards so that it will slowly wither and stand as a beacon to tell every other Nungi that look, a pig had been hunted here. Please don't hunt another this season. Go elsewhere. Allow the sow to lay one more litter. It's wonderful. If this is not sustainability, I really don't know what is. But then that's the greatness of all hunters and gatherers. If you look at it today, uh, the classic cases of uh, hunters and gatherers. Uh, in Australia, the people live in extremely hot, uh, dry desert. Uh, in uh, Arctic regions, the Inuits used to live in extremely cold regions. Um, in Africa, again, we have the rainforest situations where hunter and gatherers are. They have always managed uh, to live in extreme environmental situations and for a fairly long time. For the Ungis and the worldview they live and practice with, there is really no difference between the spirits and themselves, uh, or there is no distinction uh, in terms of, say, standard English categories of sacred and profane, or pure and impure. Space, or the forest, the sky, the sea, the creeks, um, all of them together constitute what they call as injube, or rather space. And human beings and spirits are mutually transformable. So spirits are born in shape of human beings and human beings after death can transform into spirits. So there's a kind of transformation going al along the line of say this world and the other world which connects the Injube or the total reference to sea, forest, creeks uh, and the whole space around in which Tongis operate. So when the rough weather is there, which is marked by the presence of winds and storm conditions, it is the spirits who are gathering in the sea and the beach or the coastal area. Consequently, the Ungis would move into the deeper forest areas and rely mostly on uh, Tamanua or uh, Buludange, Buludange being the jackfoots and Tamanua being the pigs. Uh, and when the season changes, the on the horizontal level also, the traffic changes, so the spirits are back in the forest when uh, Ungis cannot hunt pigs there and they move to the coastal areas. So in that sense it is uh, doing for each other, very much like the idea of sharing as I was mentioning earlier on, that it is not that I am going to give you or I should be nice and polite to you, but you just share it.
with the onset of the season called Maya Kangne, the hunters were in the coast again. They would build their shelters here and stay near the sea from October right through to April. The forest within would be left alone with the presiding spirits to renew its own resources and await the return of the hunters. For now, the sea would yield its bounty for the Onge. उसको तो ज़्यादा तो एक एक लाल बट की होता वो आई मिलेगा और गोबरा मच्छी वो मिलेगा पत्थर में बना तो उसमें बहुत ज़्यादा गुस रहेगा तो उसको पहले आगी जला के पत्थर को गरम कर देता फिर पत्थर डाल के फिर गुस डाल दिया गुस का ऊपर फिर पत्थर डाल दिया फिर वो गरम वाला पत्थर लेके उसका ऊपर में डाल दिया फिर उसको पूरा अच्छे से पैक करके फिर ऊपर माटी डाल दिया बाप ऊपर नहीं आना अंदर ही अंदर रहेगा पत्ती होता है ना उसमें खुशबू वाला तो वो पत्ती डालते हैं वो तो हमारा भाषा में तो है लेकिन हिंदी में ये खिदरू तेज अगर किसी के पास जाएगा तो उल्लू का पास जाएगा उल्लू का पास होगा उल्लू खाने को देगा हम लोग पास आएगा हम लोग पास खाने को देगा इस तरह से पहले यू नो इफ यू कंपेयर द हॉट ट्रॉपिकल रेन फॉरेस्ट ऑफ लिटल अंडामान और अंडामान एट लार्ज टू इवन द आर्कटिक सर्कल्स एंड द traditional descriptions we have if somebody catches a huge seal uh, they are not able to consume 20 kilos of meat on their own they have to share it and same is true with the little andaman islanders that if you catch a pig which is worth about 30 kilos of processed meat you can't just eat for yourself uh, so the, those are major differences with in in a lifestyle so to say which reflects a kind of world view that i must share what i catch today tomorrow i may not succeed in the forest it's not going to a shopping mall that you pick up the stuff so people become interdependent uh, and it is not a morality but it's a way in which it is practiced every day pehle to aise tha pehle zamana mein koi cheez ka fikr nahi tha khane peene ka aisa kuch kharidna ho to zarurat hi nahi aisa sabhi free mein rehte man aata shikar karta जंगल जाता फ्रूट फ्रूट भी ढूंढ लेता फल उल आलू वगैरह कोई भी करने सब मिल के खा लेते आज वो नौकरी करता तो फिर मैना का इंतजार करना तो उस टाइम तो हम लोग मैना का इंतजार नहीं होता जब पाया तब जा कर खा लेते When even a single tree is felled, it has been observed that the gap in the canopy thus created is enough to let the force of the torrential rain into the humus or soil below. With nothing to bind to, the soil gets rapidly leached into the surrounding corals. These, in turn, do not receive adequate sunlight because the waters are muddied; hence, they die or are bleached over a short period. This is where the fishes grow. This is where the fingerlings survive and grow to their adult adulthood. If we allow these to be destroyed, we are also destroying India's future protein security. The amount of soil loss is so much, given the rainfall when the sunlight is directly incident on the land without a cover. The land loses its productivity. Most of its nutrients will get leached out. It will lose all the humus that it had. and therefore the land becomes unusable obviously this is not a sustainable process for tai and kakey life was changing in a way that they had never dreamt possible on their island gabalonge had come swarms of settlers with new and unknown ways to the outsider they became the jungle 
the outsiders also had their own misbegotten notions of civilizing them. The land and the resources within which they had carved such a bountiful and seemingly balanced life was to amount for nothing, as outsiders cut down trees and created plantations of oil palm without even bothering to consult them. After all, these are the people who shift their housing, who shift their residence because the winds have shifted. We are the ones who are stuck in a place, whether it is hot or whether it is too cold. My God, I have this house here, I can't leave it. But this is a great life. You can move, you have a freedom. It's the ultimate freedom which we aspire but we can't attain. But the government thinks that they shouldn't be moving around. They should stay fixed because then they can become agrarian type societies. They will cultivate a plot of land and they will stay put in it. But can you deny them this capacity, something which has been with them for ages, that chance to move from one part to the other part, chance to maintain the identity among the Ongis as Aram Tega and Ariyato in classical ethnographies, as pig hunters and turtle hunters. All marriage exchanges took place in between the two distinctions of the coastal dwellers and the forest dwellers. But if you say that, no, now you all will be confined to this territory which the government is going to develop for you and you will stay put here, is to deny certain things. And the capacity to move for a hunter and gatherer is not just a relationship of movement, but it is a relationship which is the foundation for all the cultural beliefs and the practices which have kept them going on. Despite knowing that these rainforests are more useful to us in their pristine forms, we still view them as short-term resources. As they disappear, the self-sufficient and independent hunter-gatherer is forced into dependence on the alternative systems we attempt to provide. One individual's accomplishment, one individual's specific skill sets are recognized by the whole society. So they do not have a sense of permanent leadership per se, but there is a contextual leadership. So if a canoe has to be built by the Ongis, the person who is most skilled in identifying the trunk of the tree, which would be most suitable to carve the canoe out, is a leader for that particular moment. If it is hunting pigs and the pig has been hunted, there is somebody who knows the best how to carve the pig who would always be called and requested to take the leadership for that specific amount of time, for that specific time and work. But we have this idea that our hierarchies are something which are fixed. Say whether it is hierarchy based on caste divisions, class divisions, or status and power group divisions. But there is a sense in which the structure remains. Structure cannot be very fluid. It's problematic if it becomes very fluid hierarchical structure or dynamic structure. But the Ongis don't have that and that's not a problem. But when the two worlds clash or collide or come into contact, as has been the case with the Andamans, the great Andamanese, they never had a designated Raja, which was something which the British colonial empire did, that somebody had to be accountable to speak for the community. So they appointed Rajas. Um, it has gone on even in uh, post-independence. Uh, there is a Raja and there is a Chota Raja and Bada Raja. 
in spite of the fact that all the ongis have their traditional names, uh, we have uh, used names like dalda, roti, uh, langoti. These are infringements, so to say, on not human rights, but acknowledging the other human being as a human being. They also have their cultures, but we have changed it. It's exactly what happened in North America, you know, with the coming in of the other people. The indigenous people's names were changed. They were translated. Sitting bull, flying crow, uh, conning fox, you know. Things like these, these are not tolerable. Well, my father was talking to them. अभी जो मेरा मम्मी जब से रानी बनी तब से उनका बात कोई नहीं सुनते और उन वो वो ठीक है वो रानी है वो आएगा तो गाड़ी भेजना चाहिए और वो कहीं भी जाएगा तो गाड़ी लेने आना चाहिए पर ऐसा ऑफिस वाला नहीं करेंगे उसको उनको बोला देंगे उसका बाद में वो ऑटो करके फिर वापस जाएंगे आजकल नौकरी का भी जो यहाँ जाओ यहाँ वहाँ जाओ मगर आप आदमी लोग बोलते कि ट्राइबल को नौकरी पहले देना चाहिए पर ट्राइबल को नौकरी नहीं मिलता हो जाओ सब सोचते पता नहीं सर ऐसे कैसा है हम ही को नहीं समझ में आते दे ऑलवेज क्रिएट दिस इमेज दैट दे आर नो इंडिविजुअल्स अमॉन्ग द हंटर गैदर्स लाइक दोंगीज and they don't have a hierarchy to put them in an order we must create a hierarchy but it's a different kind of hierarchy it's a very elaborate hierarchy women make certain decisions which are very important which men cannot transgress take the classic example of clay painting men can do it they can cover themselves in clay but it is always the woman and woman's father's home from where the woman brings the traditional clay paint face design and it is always to be done in accordance of that so the wife does it to the husband and the mother does it to the children but these are hierarchical structures in a way in which the practice sustains their culture why do we expect that they should act exactly like the hierarchical structure which we have created and it creates a problem pehle to is tarah nahi tha jo ki hum log jaisa apna riwayat mein jeeta apna khata tha us time abhi to government ka hand bhi aake to hum log ko jar walon ka halat se aur bhi bigad diya abhi hum log to ऐसा हो गया कि हम लोग अपना अंदर में रहने भी नहीं सकते अपना भाषा भी एकदम चेंज हो जाता है और दूसरा चीज़ है जो भी स्टाफ जाता है वहाँ में जाके पीता खाता हम लोग को भी सिखा दिया सब अब दारू पीना पत्ती खेलना जुआ खेलना है सब स्टाफ का अंदर सिखाता सीख जाता है तो उसमें खराब होने का नतीजा ये होता है आदमी सब खराब हो जाता कहीं भी जाएगा एक दिमाग में घुसा पालना जाए पत्ती खेल तो वहाँ जाएगा पालना जाए दारू में इधर जाएगा और कोई जो एच बी एस का या पुलिस का हो किसी का भी हो कोई भी बाहर का आदमी लोग आता है उन लोग को तो माल ये लोग को ये चीज़ देगा दारू देगा हम लोग को कुछ मिलेगा छानिया जो कोई ऐसा कोई सामान हो गया उसके पीछे लोग दारू ला के देगा धूप हुआ कोई कोई आदमी ऐसा दे देता है तो उसी में दे दे के आदत भी खराब कर दी अभी हम लोग के साथ इस तरह हो गया हम लोग का आदमी लोग कैसा हो गया कि दारू के बिना रह नहीं सकता वट वी हैव टू गेन फ्रॉम दिस विंडो इन टू अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड अप्रिशिएटिंग द एंडरबन आईलैंडर्स is that the ongis always see themselves as a part of their house and the house as a part of the forest and the forest as a part of the sea and the winds and the spirits which are there so we must put a human being also not a male female or white black or brown but it is trying to see how the human beings are part of that along with other species of life which are part there 
So it's trying to see it that way rather than just saying, well, we should not cut this tree because these birds will go away or don't overgraze with the cattle this grass because the tigers would be affected. But you know, the problem is that all of us have to coexist. Just like the Ongi say, we spirits are always around us. We have to live with them. How do we live with each other? Archaeological evidence points to the fact that the Andamanese islanders had lived on these islands for over 20,000 years. How they came is still a mystery. They lived within their means, partaking of the bounty that the forest provided, yet had learned to understand how to return what they took, learned that nature's bounty was not inexhaustible, but required replenishment. In less than a hundred years since they befriended us, they are on the verge of cultural extinction. जब तक है तो ये जंगल में रहेगा शिकार उकार करने का स्थिति भी आराम रहता है। अभी तो काटते जाता है अगर हम लोग नहीं रहेगा तो जंगल भी खत्म ही जाएगा। अभी हम लोग का भाषा खत्म होती जाते हैं, कुछ कुछ कम ती होती जाते हैं। इतना बोलने वाला नहीं, गाने वाला नहीं, नाचने वाला नहीं। फिर उनको समझाना तो भाषा तो छूटती जाता और आगे चल के क्या है पता नहीं हमें मुश्किल से कितना 51 बच्चे अब सब बदल जाएगा तो क्या नाम रह जाए कुछ नहीं